Welcome to Mod City TV, the best of modern living in Dallas. This episode, we'll show you where to find new modern homes for under $400,000 close to downtown and Trinity Grove. I meet with artist Ricardo Paniago, who has taken his geometric inspired dreams to a whole new dimension. And we get a look into the mind of the brilliant interior designer, Joshua Rice. I'm your host, Jeff Levine, and this is Mott City TV, Dallas Edition. Massive changes are sweeping through West Dallas. New home builds are often traditional tract houses, but some developers are thinking outside the tract and putting up homes with a modern flair and personality. Sitting next to the Trinity River and within minutes of Trinity Grove, these lots are being developed by Davino Homes. These houses are not only eye-catching, but they are being sold for less than $400,000. Josh Correa of Davina Homes is going to give us a tour. Wow, what an incredible structure. This is a beautiful modern. Thank you. Great materials, great design. And obviously the metal and the glass is so significant. Correct. I wanted to play that and that uh, mix those materials together the metal siding, the glass balcony, the uh, fiber cement siding. I wanted to create a lot of straight lines, keep that modern look to it. And, and then also incorporate this garage door with the uh, glass panels on the side. Yeah, that's very cool. Color-wise, interesting colors. Yes, a lot of people would say you, you're taking a risk with those colors, but I, I think they're very clean. You know, the thought process of doing black trim around the garage door, black trim around the exterior doors with white, it just gives it that clean, nice pop to it. So one of the nice compliments of this home is the landscape. Correct. It's a very low maintenance landscaping. We provided some evergreens here in the front, a live oak tree, and we also cut the concrete in a way so we can provide some crushed granite right in the middle of it. In the same spirit, we're keeping the straight lines and just giving it that extra touch or that extra feel on these homes. Wow, what a magnificent interior. It is, it is. And then obviously the space is beautiful, open environment. Correct, very open space, very uh, light colors. There seems to be a lot of thought that went into this particular project. We used a gentleman, uh, an architect, with uh, Roberto Casairas with RC3D, and along with him, we put this plan, we put the ideas together. A lot of open concept, a lot of open kitchen, a lot of open layout. So what was the inspiration for the, the floors, the countertops? We just low maintenance. I wanted everything to be low maintenance, very uh, materials that last a very long time. So we use engineered hardwood floors instead of your regular typical laminate floors. Same thing with the countertops. We use quartz material and that's very durable, long lasting material. The, the beautiful part about the kitchen is the backsplash. I love the backsplash. We did big pieces of towel just for the simple fact we want to have minimal grout lines and that makes it easy for cleaning. All the plugs and all the lighting is underneath these cabinets. As well as you've got some great little features. Uh, yes. Yeah. We have some of these plugs on the counter just to make it easier for people to charge their phones. They can just pop the plugs up. And it's just a convenience. And then the countertops, I mean, this is really spectacular for the value. Correct. One of the, the interesting things is your appliance package. Is this all included in the base price? I guess in the building industry, you consider this brand, a Bosch brand, an upgrade. For us, it's a standard. And Correct. these cabinets? You can see there's no handles here. Very straight lines, very low maintenance. It has a laminate finish to them, very clean. With all these upgrades, how do you get a home like this? for under 400,000. It just takes a lot of careful planning, a lot of careful scheduling, talking to our vendors and, and our relationships with those vendors and, and asking them, hey, we're building at this price point, we need better pricing. All the bedrooms in this home are on the second level. There's a beautiful master suite, a grand bath with separate shower and soaking tub. And one of the most captivating features, that stunning glass balcony. To top it off, Josh has added something that will surprise many potential buyers. Wow, this is, a, this is a $375,000 view that's more like a million dollar view. It is. It Unbelievable. Is. What it's, a, it's really nice and it's really crazy the, the kind of views you can capture here. You know, the downtown views, 360 degree views just from the top of this roof deck. I mean, to think to you, you know, for somebody to have the opportunity to own a 
a piece of land like this, with this home, with this view. Right. It's pretty incredible. It is. I mean, it's just, at night, it's, it's just, lights are everywhere. You, you get to see the downtown buildings, you get to see the blue lines, the red lines, all the different colors, Reunion Tower. It's a very beautiful sight. This is an incredible home. It, it, it sort of makes me think, what's your background all about? Because you just don't show up doing these kind of things. No, uh, I've been in the construction industry for over 25 years. And I've been in the building industry, building homes as a builder, for 15 years. And we started out by building in some of the affluent neighborhoods here in Dallas, like Preston Hollow, Highland Park. And during that time, I was buying land down here and just trying to have a vision for this neighborhood as it, as it was being developed. Acquiring these kind of lots, and were you doing this a long time ago? What was like this thought process? You know, it all started very young. I was a young kid and, and I got captured by the views of downtown. I got captured by the Trinity River levee and I started looking at the neighborhood, started looking at the lots and they were very affordable at the time. So I've been buying down here for the last 12, 13 years. With all your acquisitions, what's your plan? Well, my plan is for 2019 to you know, release 10 or more lots. In 2020, we we'll release some more lots. Currently, we're just building these four, but we believe in this neighborhood. We believe in what West Dallas is about. This part of West Dallas is going through amazing growth and change. And with the help of developers like Davina Homes, the future looks bright. To see more of these homes, connect with Noe DeLeon at IdentityHouseRealEstate.com or check out all the modern listings in Dallas on moderndallas.net. Want more Mod City TV Dallas edition? Go to moderndallas.net for real estate, videos, gallery openings, events and more. I'm Ricardo Panyawa. I am an artist and uh, human. I'm a self-taught artist and art started in my dreams. These dreams, they're sometimes literal paintings and sometimes, uh, you know, they're like art assignments given to me directly from beyond the veil. And sometimes I can't even claim the art is my own because I don't know where it came from. It was shown to me by some other um, form of intelligence, you know, cosmic intelligence. Both of my grandfathers were master ceramic tile artisans. My father was as well, and I was for a period. Um, and then I decided I want to make geometric patterns with paint. It's easier. <laughs> but when I was being birthed, I came out feet first. <laughs> uh, some crazy things happened to me in my childhood. Like one time I fell out of a tree and landed on my back, and two flowers landed in my nostrils and all kinds of crazy things have always happened in my life. The first time I discovered the power of paint was at Job Corps. I went there and lived there for six uh, months and developed a skill, and they had free paint, and they had all these four by eight pieces of plywood, and I made like 16 of these four by eight foot paintings on wood panel and it was a whole story. Those were my first paintings and they were so good I had my family pick them up and bring them back. Well, I didn't realize it and I didn't know about it. So my grandmother, my grandfather and my father and my aunt conspired behind my back to use those for roofing repairs on my aunt's house and they cut them up and put them all over her roof and I was I went to her house one day and saw them cut up on the roof and I started crying. <laughs> the first time that I was acknowledged as a successful artist was by, by my grandmother. Um, she saw me on the news. Uh, Channel 4 and Channel 33, they had a helicopter shooting my public art installations and I was like, yes, grandma finally approves. <laughs> when I started doing artwork, it was very gestural and abstract, like storytelling almost. And then like whatever DNA codes activated from my heritage one day, and like geometry started like coming in and taking over and 
It became like even like a very purist approach of art making eventually. I had a dream that woke me up in the middle of the night. The dream was a hypercube form, a mathematical concept that I really didn't know of beforehand, and it showed me these lines painted on the form. And I got up and made it, and I noticed a phenomenon happening um, with the intersecting geometry, and it was mind-blowing. It was so intriguing. I painted probably 50 since 2011, and people love them. The paintings build themselves, you know. I let the artwork, you know, the artwork comes from always the unconscious, even when I'm awake. I mean, this piece right over here forever, an incredible piece of work on canvas. Tell us a little bit about how does this come about? What is the meaning of this piece? This is the first painting that I made in this studio. I call the studio the cathedral. It's 10 by eight feet, and it took about three months to make. And so the painting built itself. I had no idea what I was gonna paint. It slowly revealed itself with a message <laughs> of, for me, hope, and for humanity. What's the meaning of spiritus? Uh, spiritus basically just means uh, from beyond uh, the veil or from, you know, beyond this world, a message from, you know, another world, spirit world. The center cone. Why <clears> that <throat> and why there? But yeah, this is actually a cylinder. It's just going on to eternity. It can be interpreted as an extraterrestrial vessel, as, you know, a deity, yeah. It's an exceptional work of art. So let's talk a little bit about your fiberglass. These are cast fiberglass wall sculptural objects. I actually consider them complex canvases. Um, since the dawn of painting on canvas or linen, people have painted either usually on a square or a rectangle. And I decided that I wanted to make uh, these forms that also go on the wall and lend themselves towards painting, uh, but deny that simple notion of, you know, art history and flat painting. And so I engineered these pieces to kind of defy that concept and build onto the body of work that came, you know, with my hypercube sculptures. If you were to take a picture of that, it was all evenly lit and you printed it out, you would see a repeating tessellated geometric pattern. And I have taken since from this body of work, that concept and created crosswalk paintings in Dallas and surrounding cities. Those are actually conceptual works of art. You keep using the word tessellation. Tessellation, yes, it's a fabulous what? word. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> Uh, tessellation is like a mathematical or geometric term and so basically what it means is like at least two shapes that uh, that wrap around each other and multiply um, so it's kind of like you know gets into fract fractals and fractalization and things like that so yeah it's endlessly fun and beautiful <laughs> your work <laughs> well uh, geometry <laughs> well we wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing you and your work throughout Dallas, Facebook, with your great posts. And we appreciate it. Ricardo, it been a pleasure. My pleasure. New technology is revolutionizing modern lighting. Light's Fantastic Pro is giving builders, designers, and architects the technology and tools they need to create exciting spaces that have the power to make life better. Join us as we talk with forward-thinking industry leaders to see how they are taking modern living to the next level. Let's dig deep and find out how they are rethinking modern living. I'm Joshua Rice and I'm an interior designer. I started a, a company called Bodron and Fruit uh, pretty much right out of college within a few months of graduating college was able to do beautiful work with them and worked there for approximately seven years until I started my own firm in, I think, 2007. My background comes from such formality, but 
formality with sophistication. So when I went out on my own, I kind of wanted to try to keep that same level of sophistication, but tone down the formality a little bit and have these beautifully curated interiors that lack a little bit of the formality and more comfortable, livable. A lot of my clients are families or just people that, you know, like to just live their life instead of, you know, tiptoeing around furniture. When a client comes to me, the first thing we do is, is evaluate the interior. My goal is to create the most dynamic floor plan I can. I'm always trying to do something that either utilizes the space and get as much seating or as much you know interaction out of it and it's a balance of functionality and how it fills the space rather than individual pieces once i've kind of worked out that equation then the next step kind of goes into another balancing act of of you know this chair has certain properties and the this sofa and this is from this brand more readily available while this this is a vintage piece that's you know a little bit more approachable and then there might be a high design piece over here and it's it's just kind of mashing all that together and, and creating that curated interior that we've talked about i think about rethinking modern living all the time because now with the integration of electronics and how even though we kind of start to become isolated with these electronic devices we still want to be around other people you know so um, it, trying to kind of create these spaces where families can come and you know the kids might be over here working on their iPads or you know somebody's on their laptop over here doing some work they're still spending time together and that takes a lot of thought and work to kind of develop and mold a space to where that can actually happen. This house is a good example. They wanted a living room where the family could interact and kids could sit and do their homework and yet be part of the conversation. There's a desk behind me with a couple of pull-up stools and it has a power grommet in it. Ideally, that's where the kids can sit and do some homework while parents are watching TV, yet they're all spending time together, yet doing their own individual things. Depending on the, the scale of the project, it, you know, if it's a, if it's a multi-million dollar house, you, you're, you're foolish not to incorporate as many trades as you can because ultimately somebody's gonna have to do it. Um, lighting designer is a good example things that you can do now with LEDs and we'll be able to do. It's changing so fast and I think the possibilities with all the LED technology are endless. In a big multi-million dollar house, the lighting has to be done. You can either put it off and, and have somebody that's not a professional do it or you can actually hire a lighting designer to do it and ultimately it's probably going to end up costing you the same amount of money. Um, so I, I think it's a collaborative effort and I think the best projects are you know when everybody gets together. I think it's important to get interior designers in as, as early as possible. I worked with the homeowners to develop the space and to curate the furniture and to curate the art. Was involved since the beginning along with the architect. And as this house was being built and as the spaces were being shaped, you know, I, I knew exactly where art needed to go. So it, it wasn't I wasn't brought in and kind of making use of existing spaces. I mean, we had the opportunity to create art walls, and they were great to work with and have great taste. So you know, hence good art. I think in terms of design in the future, I, I do notice, albeit slowly, um, especially here in Dallas, that people are becoming a lot more appreciative and into design, which is, I think is very helpful towards the industry. I don't find people as often saying they just want a nice looking house. I, I, I get people that have ideas and input on designs or eras of design that they, they find interesting, which shows a knowledge that people you know, 15 years ago didn't have. And I think that's a good thing. Thanks for watching Mod City TV. To find more videos, home tours, events, and all of the best of modern living in Dallas, visit us at moderndallas.net.